never have I ever used Gamsol. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Gamsol. I've had Gamsol sitting somewhere in a corner for years. I was inspired to buy it after watching my friend Gina K of Gina K Designs, who has used it on her channel many times over the years. And I thought, today's the day. Today's the day. Part of it was seeing another one of my friends, Lisa Hetrick, create with Gamsol. And I thought, I've waited too long. We're gonna do it today. Stick around to see my Gamsol experiment. I'm keeping it very simple. That card project is coming up next. For today's installment of Never Have I Ever, I am going to be using Gamsol. Now I have watched Gina Kay use this for years. In fact, that is why I have this. Probably three years ago, four years ago, I watched Gina Color and then I did, bought my Gamsol and a whole big pack of blending stumps and my little, you know, file thing and well, I never did anything with it. So. Recently, I was watching my friend Lisa Hetrick on a live, and I will be sure to link her video below because she's such a great instructor. And it inspired me to bust out the Gamsol. I thought I had either thrown it away or given it away, but no, it was it was still downstairs, buried in the craft slash dining room. So we're gonna give that a whirl. Now, here's the thing. I only have this many colored pencils, okay? Not a lot, right? Um, they're all... Polychromos Faber-Castell, okay, but I I bought these too and I thought I needed all the things, but they've really just kind of sat in this cup and done nothing. I have a stamp set that might be hard to find right now. I think uh, they're out of stock at Gina's store, but I'm sure they're coming back because I love these snowmen. I love these snowmen and I figure if I've got simple images to color, I'm going to do better. I also have Gina's Onyx, Black Onyx ink, I have a little glass jar that I am going to pour uh, some of my Gamsol in so it's easy to dip. And well, you know what? We're gonna see what happens. So let me get set up for stamping. I've got some of Gina K's heavy base weight white cardstock. I wanna make sure my mat's down there. And this is what I'm gonna stamp my snowman on or my snow people. Honestly, I just think I wanna do one today. I'm gonna stamp one here. It would be cute to also stamp one of these little envelopes. Let's go here and here, and then I think I could flip it and get a second batch. So, picking that up like this, okay. Reposition, I'm gonna get my Debbie tool here, and we're just gonna ink this up with black onyx. Now this is a stamp set I've had for a while. I've, I know I've used this somewhere before. Can't remember off the top of my head, but that, you know. Although I don't think I've done the envelope, but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I didn't never use that, because look at how beautifully that stamps. I'm gonna give it one more go, like that. And we're gonna stamp that down. Now let's flip it, let's see what happens here. Come in here, right? I think I have, oh yeah, yeah, I have clearance. We have clearance, Clarence. I like to have a backup when I'm creating, be, especially when it comes to coloring. And here's the thing, when when I'm in the middle of the month of September, right, and that is the month of Stamptember, I do a lot of coloring because a lot of the exclusives that come out during that month are cute little images. And then I just forget about it. And then I forget about it until the, you know, the, the coming year and go back to my usual style of card. So I want to remind myself to color things every now and then because I can, I'm not, I'm not horrible. I'm better than horrible in the words of Gina K. And so I should do this more often. All right, I'm gonna close that up and I'm gonna put my stamps away and we'll get ready to start with our colored pencils and Gamsol. Here we go, here goes nothing. The first pencil I'm going to use is this color, Deep Scarlet Red. You know, and I, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to add color to both the hat and the scarf. But what I'm gonna do here is just go along the edge of each friend and by friend, I just mean band 
in the scarf. Now the thing that's kind of cool about this, and I'm going to turn this because I like to, I like to make coloring easier. The reason I wanted to try this is I find coloring to be a little intimidating. However, when you have a pencil, right, it's it's a little easier to control because we all know about pencils, right? We've all colored with pencils, maybe some of us more successfully than others. But I think, and I could be wrong, this is going to be cool because I I'm gonna be able to stay in the lines a little bit better, if you can see that, right? Well, actually, well, let's do this. Keep you there. That's pretty good. You can see that pretty well. That's what we're doing. We're coloring. And we're gonna blend this out with the Gamsol, which again, whole new, whole new world for me. I think the other thing that's cool is I can do all this first before busting out the Gamsol. Okay. Also, I do hold my pencil and pen a little strangely. When I was in school, as a, as a little one, my dad was left-handed and they forced him to be right-handed. I feel like I watched my dad, uh, the way he held his pencil, and I think that's how I learned to hold a pencil. So I hold it like a lefty, and then he has this weird claw way of holding it, and that's how I learned. Uh, and they tried to correct me too, but I, I fought back. Okay, this is Orange Glaze. And I think this whole, and I'm just gonna come right in here and try to get it dark in here and then blend out his nose, okay? Now, I'm not gonna get crazy with trying to come up with all kinds of different colors, but I would like to come here and I would like to try to blend out from the side, okay? It's gonna look a little different on his hat, okay? So that's that's what we're gonna try there, all right? You know, you know what they say, never say never. Okay, I don't, I have an idea for his, uh, let's see here, there we go. I have an idea for using some glitter on this and you know, I, I I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the glitter. For his body, I'm going to take a little bit of this, oh, wonderful, warm gray too, just for a little shadow, okay? Just a little shadow here. I love a warm gray. I didn't even realize this was in here. This is very exciting to have that along the edge. Okay. And also on this side as well. Not too shabby. Okay, I think that's the extent of the coloring on this friend. So let's grab this, which I think those the paper stay on or off. I don't know, but I'm gonna use one of my small blending stumps. I actually have a, a the, like I bought this whole set, and I think Gina says you just you just well, it's once you have color on here. So I, am I doing this right? You know what? It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Set that up here. See, never even used it. Oh my gosh. All right, let's 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 pop it open, but let's try to do this without uh, spilling it. Oh, there we go. And all I'm gonna do is just pour a little in here like that, because that will make it easier for me to use and I will tuck that away. And here literally goes nothing. So you get the stump wet, right? Oh my gosh, please wish me luck. And then we just start going in a circle. Oh, I see. I see how that works. Okay, look at that. I'm doing it. We're just... We're just blending it out. Oh, Kathy. Dip. Okay. Get this here. And blend out. Well, look at that. It actually looks like I know what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, this is very exciting. Uh, a little dip. 
little dip will do ya. And I'm just doing the circular motion because I've, I've seen Gina do that. I've seen Lisa Hetrick do that. And it's just that little, that little motion to create a blend. Now that looks pretty good. All right, now, because I'm still doing the other side, I think I might even go down one because these are even smaller. Um, and I don't know, no, that looks fine, that looks fine. I'm just going down one, getting my stump wet, letting that liquid come up, right? And then we'll just color this in. Ooh, that's a little floppy though, Ooh, there we go. You know what, that's a little floppy. I, I don't know if you're supposed to do this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna cut that to a point because that was feeling very floppy and I don't want floppy, I want it to be firm. Well, let's go. There we go, that's better. Because I wanna stay in the lines, not go out of the lines. Oh, I like that little scratchy sound, it's kind of fun. That's really fun. It's just bringing that color down in a way that I would have never been able to do with just the pencil, okay? That's cute. Hmm. So you have to let me know in the comments how many of you have colored pencils and have you ever used Gamsol and were you influenced by Gina? <laughs> I feel like so many of us were. Also, this ink is great. I actually did text her and I asked her, when you use Gamsol, what ink do you use? And she said, black onyx is gonna work great for you. I'm like, all right, it's one of my favorite black inks. I'm totally golden. All right, well, look at that. That's actually really cute. Yeah, 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 okay. Now I'm going to switch to the other tip for the nose, for the carrot nose. And again, I feel like my tips are just a little fuzzy, so I'm gonna just go snip to a point. Again, can is are you supposed to do that? No idea, but we're doing it. And we're gonna come out here, just draw out some of that orange. Just like that. <laughs> so cute. Okay, now we gotta move on to the gray. So here, I know that I can clean that, but actually, I'm gonna wait till those are dry and then I can sand them. And for now, I'm gonna take a larger one, like this, and I'm gonna draw out this gray in the body, just for that little bit of sh uh, shadowing. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, it's just like so nice and warm gray, isn't that nice? It just, it was super subtle. We're bringing this out again. Now granted, could I have gone a little bit more experimental with uh, going with more colors? Sure, but why? This is, this is literally how I roll when it comes to trying out a new technique. I don't wanna go overboard, right? I really want it to just be what it's gonna be and try something simply to have a little success. Now, speaking of that, I think for this envelope, again, I think I just want, well, do I want it to be orange? No, no, I have an idea. Let's just blend that down a little, okay? And a little bit there too, like that. I don't know. If I don't like this, I will. Where's my one that I did red? I'll just, uh. I'll do the other one, but I think this could be cute. I'm just gonna pull that down like that. Pull that in too. Kinda comes off pink, doesn't it? That's okay, because he's gonna look a little pink. So I'm just, I'm just bringing you down like that. That is pretty though, right? It's very, um, soft and almost watercolory. And look, you can go right over the ink 
with the Gamsol, it doesn't seem to hurt anything. So again, we're gonna grab you and just keep blending out like that. Okay, it's kind of cute. I'm gonna put a little bit more here and we'll come up from the bottom. Never have I ever indeed. I love this. And I am going to put sparkle on him, so that's why we're not uh, coloring his little trim around his uh, hat. Okay. Blend that up. That's it. I, don't, I think that actually is really cool, even though it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense from a... a <laughs> from a shadow and light standpoint. So let me grab the coordinating dies so I can cut this out. I have the coordinating dies in place here and I'm just putting these into my Gemini plates with the plate sandwich that I use. And let's move those out of the way as we go to die cut. So I'll just run this through. I think these are pretty easy to line up. Oh, so cute. So cute. Look at that little friend. I really like that. I think I did quite good and see he can hold on to this little, you know, he, he, I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet, but he might just be trying to hold on to this. Let me get the stamp set and figure out a design for the card. I wanna plan my design and I'm going to be stamping onto a piece of red velvet cardstock, but I'm just not sure yet which one, like do I want to do, I could do warm, mm, this is what I'm not sure. I love that he is here, right? And he's gonna, he's gonna hold this. Actually, I might even just do it more minimally than I even think and just do mm, winter winter wishes. I think that, I mean, even though I'm not getting the cute, well, shoot, I like, I like that swooshy do. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Maybe, maybe he could be, you know, what if he was a little bit sitting on that W? I mean, that could be cute, right? You know what I'm saying? Like if, if he was here and then I could just say, Oh, holiday wishes too. Holiday wishes would be nice. Happy with, ha jo um, hmm, shoot, you know what? I think I'm gonna do holiday wishes because it's bigger and then I could actually send this to someone. <laughs> and maybe my mom and dad, yeah, maybe they would like it. So holiday, what if I did that? I did a little holiday wishes. Then I would cut it down, okay? I'm going to trim it down. He will be sitting on top of of that just a little bit because I'm gonna pop this friend up. So I'm just trying to think this through because what I need right now, can I just pick slide you out there? Okay, we're gonna move you. And we're going to try to get this lined up. And actually I might stamp the holiday first and then try to line up the wishes. So let's, let's, uh, how am I gonna do this? I never, I wanna slide you out. Okay, there, you're out. Although that's not bad. I, I, I think that actually looks really straight. But let's see, let's put Holiday down here. And then what, oh, that is really straight, actually. And you know what, even if it's a little crooked, I can trim it so that it's straight. And that spacing, that's not bad. Okay, let's see. Oh, here's another thing you can do. You can go like, well, try, <sighs> handling this too much. I can, let me take a piece of white cardstock here, just put the stamp set underneath here. What I can do is I can actually pick up wishes. Let's make sure you're staying in the right place. And I can get it a little closer like that. And make sure that is my, oh, there's the head. I've always wanted to have my head sticking out, but let's try that that's a little closer. We're gonna roll the dice. Okay, let's prep with anti-static powder to remove static and oil from our cardstock because I've been handling it like, you know, like a person will handle. And let's get our Versamark pad. 
I ink this up. The nice thing is too, we can actually see this very clearly when we bring this down because it's the darker cardstock. And we're gonna just transfer the ink. I'm using my pressure tool, my Debbie tool here, which is modeled after Gina's Chucky, right? And the little furniture handle here. And I think that looks great. That looks great. Wipe this off real quick. Now, I'm going to be using some of Gina's Fine Detail White Powder. Let me grab my paper catch. Just a piece of cheap copy paper that I use. I'm gonna clip on my little embossing clip. Love this little friend. And let's just sprinkle this on. Let that sit for a second. Tap it off. Oh, that actually looks really good. A little more on wishes. <laughs> I haven't used this powder in a while. It's chunking up there on me, but that's good. I'll do a little brushing away. And funnel that back in and always, always wipe up with my Swiffer because there's powder in places that I cannot see. All right, now I am going to get in here and use my little brush. See this little cute friend? And I'll show you, because we wanna get the, ex if there's any extra powder here, you just wanna brush it away. And it's very easy to do with these brushes because they have a very firm tip. And I always like to take a little time to do this because this is this is not getting die cut. This is going to be on the whole panel. And so I think that's going to be just fine. I just want it to be as clean as I can get it because it's so simple. All right, let me get my heat tool warmed up and we'll melt the powder. Well, that's very, very nice. All right, I'm gonna let that cool for a second and then I'm going to take a die and trim this out. So one of the things I do after I've used embossing the anti-static powder of any kind is you wanna go over and just sort of wipe it. Now, sometimes it might seem like, oh, I can still see a little bit of it there, but it's really gonna fade out and it's gonna look just fine. But I always wipe it away with an e-cloth I love e-cloths because I think they're super all-purpose. So now I can bring this in. And again, I'm just going to try to figure out. See, I think he, you know what? I need a bigger die. I need it to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to trim this. I think this is the four by five and a quarter. Because what I want to do, right, is kind of visualize him there. Have that there. His little envelope is going to be kind of in that general area. But I think it's okay if he's sitting on the W, you know? I actually think that's really cute. Unless, let me just know. Well, this is where we switch. No, no, no. Nope, we're good. Oh, what about that? Wait a minute. I didn't even think of, no, because then it's like he's sitting on it. But that actually fits in. Hold on here. I never know until I get to the, you know, until I get to the end. Okay. Now, let's pretend, what about that? That's kind of cute. You know what? I actually really like that. I don't want him sitting on that at all. I want him right there. I'm gonna tape this into place and I'm gonna run that quickly through the die cut machine. All right, I am going to put a few foam squares on, on my friend, on my snow friend. So he can be a little popped up, right? Cause I, oh yes. Look at, he look at, he look at how sweet he is. And then I'm not gonna glue them yet. We are going to put this on with just some tape runner. But before I get carried away, let me get some foam tape for the back. I'm just gonna pop some of this tape from all to new on the back. My panel is a little warped. Sometimes I will put things into a book and it helps to just really flatten them. But also, what helps flatten? Generous amounts of foam tape. <laughs> and you know me, I, I like to adhese. I like to adhese. 
there we are. <laughs> I think the back, uh, the backers on the Alta New Tape is, is so pretty. <laughs> You shouldn't, it shouldn't be that pretty. You're like, I don't want to, I don't want to get rid of it. Okay. Let's just set this aside so we can make our note card. I'm going to make my note card. This will be top folding USA 2. And this is also from the same Gina K cardstock. Because if I'm stamping on some, oh, I just slid out of the groove. If I'm stamping on something, I also like it to be uh, the same paper. So I'll fold this down like that. And I'm going to give that a press with my Teflon bone folder. Now, there is something I have to go get that I do not have here in the uh, studio. And that is something that I'm going to use, hopefully, to make it shiny. So let me go grab that, and we'll put the card together. So here's what we're going to do. First, we pop you down. I think I have to stand up to do this because it's hard for me to see. So forgive my head if it gets in the way. Look at that. Look at that glorious framing margin space. Let's just go like that. Okay. Straight enough. It's a little, it's a little, a little wonky, but you know what? We're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now I want to reposition him or her. Put the little envelope. Oh, it's just so cute. Okay, let me get my tape because the envelope is gonna go right on the on the piece. Okay, just a little tape runner here. Get my little tweezers, and we'll just hold that into place as we slide him. Do we want him to be angled down? I kind of like him angled up happy. And now we'll take the backers off here and here. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of my liquid glue, my Gina K Connect glue. Pop this on. That's just going to give me that little bit of wiggle room before. And actually, you know what? If I hold him up here, I think I can see better. And we're just, <laughs> come here now. We're just going to pop him right there. Oh, so cute. Look at him. Oh, I think that is so cute. Okay, now here's the thing that I'm most excited about. And uh, I have been waiting for a chance to use this forever. This is another never have I ever. Okay, maybe not really. I've used stickles a few times, but I have had this diamond stickles for the longest time. And we are going to, let's zoom in here. You gotta see this goodness. We are gonna put it on his hat. So let me grab a piece of scratch paper, this little guy. I just wanna make sure it's flowing because I, I, I don't think I've ever used this color of stickles, but I've had it I, and I found it while I was, uh, here, hold on. Oh, it's flowing like, like the Ganges itself. Okay, here we go little here for the top. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> of course it has to it has to dry before you're going to really see the shine of it all. But trust me, it's coming. All right, let's just see if we can do this. We're, we're filling it in the best we can like this. So this is my idea instead of having a really um glittery like put glitter and glue down I thought this would be cute because this would give it a tiny bit of dimension oh my gosh it looks so good it looks so good I am going to take my craft pick here and just sort of swirl that a bit make sure we're filled in but Look at the shine, it's so cute. So this has to dry completely before, you know, before I take pictures and do things. But this is my first attempt at coloring with Gamsol. I actually think it turned out really quite well. Again, you know, we literally used three pencils, right? And, you know, just a couple of little stumps. Now, of course, 
this is what I know about the stump to clean them, you just take this and go across, right, to reveal fresh stump. I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm not gonna be coloring, but I don't know. I think this Gamsol thing, and I'm gonna keep mine in this little, this little jar. These are weird jars though. I have a couple of them for some of my nail polish products and sometimes they don't seal and my nail polish stuff evaporates, but I'm gonna see if the Gamsol will stay in here because it's nice and convenient, right? But that's our finished card project for today. So I would love to know in the comments again, have you tried Gamsol and colored pencils? If so, do you have any good tips for me? If not, does this inspire you to want to give it a try? You can find links to all the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my channel and I will see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few other winter card ideas, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below, and I'll see you in those videos.